Welcome to episode number 77 of the River City Hardball podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Gibson, the place to talk baseball in Jacksonville, made possible by our friends at 925 Partners Insurance, also Collins Builders in Jacksonville. And a great pleasure to bring on a former Bulls Bulldog, won a couple of state championships uh, with the Bulldogs, and now is uh, really tearing it up at the collegiate level. Austin Knight joins us tonight on the podcast. Austin, how you doing, man? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well, but uh, I'm not hitting 370 right now. <laughs> you are uh, really playing well for Charlotte. T tell me about the season thus far. You guys are ranked in the top 25. Uh, yeah, we're playing really well as a team, and all the hard work we put in in the fall brought us closer as a team, which I think is one of the main reasons why we're playing so well is because it's kind of formed like a brotherhood in our team, and everyone always has each other's back. So it's nice seeing success on and off the field with our team. Austin, what's it been like uh, playing this year coming off of, you know, the remnants of COVID-19? Obviously, the virus is still around and affecting our lives. But what's it been like uh, to play uh, a season? Uh, you know, last year, so many guys lost their season, didn't have very many games to play. But how have you guys responded to all that adversity? Uh, it's been great getting back on the field, kind of getting back to – normal or the way life used to be before COVID hit. And I mean, I was devastated when the season got canceled last year to it. And it's really exciting to be back on the field every day and playing the game that we all grew up loving. Absolutely. Um, Austin, let's go back. I want to go back to your time at Bowles. Uh, you, I mentioned that you won two state championships. You're also a runner up as part of the Bowles Bulldogs uh, baseball team. Tell me some of the favorite memories that you have of playing baseball at Bowls. Uh, definitely those two state championships out there. Just the friendships that I made while playing for Bowls and playing other schools around Jacksonville. Just being able to build friendships with kids on that team and other teams. And just the knowledge that I learned from head coach Mike Boswell, everything he taught me and just helped me develop as a player. And I couldn't imagine going anywhere other than Bulls. Man, I don't know how many people realize the amount of talent uh, in terms of baseball that comes out of Jacksonville. That's one of the things that I try to do on this podcast and showcase and spotlight just the amount of talent that, that has come out of Jacksonville. I mean, you're part of that talent group. I mean, it's pretty amazing the, the amount of guys uh, that come out of Jacksonville. Yeah. It's definitely a powerhouse in uh, Florida, which most people don't realize players come out of Jacksonville. But, I mean, in recent memory, there have been a lot of really good baseball players to come out of Jacksonville. Well, and you think of uh, just the guys that came out of Bowles. Chipper Jones, as you know, came out of Bowles and went on to have a Hall of Fame career. Uh, Austin, who are maybe some of the guys that you follow professionally that you maybe model your game after? Any favorite players in – at the big league level that you look at? Uh, well, during the off season, I hit with DJ Stewart, who was also a Bulls grad who plays uh, for the Orioles. Mm -hmm. And he's taught me a lot about the mental side of the game and just hitting in general. But probably my favorite player that I grew up watching was Derek Jeter, just because of everything he did on the field while maintaining, like, just the way he came off the field as well is what I look up to and like what I strive to be is the player that he was on and off the field. Yeah, DJ Stewart's a pretty good guy to talk to as well, as you mentioned, playing for the Orioles. How often do you talk to DJ? Um, it depends because we normally go hit – like during COVID, we would just go to uh, – depends. We'd either go to like Greenland where I grew up playing or we'd just go hit a bowls. And just having someone to go hit with makes it a lot more fun. And it's someone that is doing what I want to be doing, which is playing professional baseball. So it gives me something to like look forward to and like watch firsthand and just pick up tips from him along the way. You know, both you guys went to bowls. Um, you know, I was talking earlier about some of the state championships that, that you were able to win there at Bowles. Can you take me back to a specific moment and maybe the state title run or any specific moment that you remember back to? 
Uh, the craziest moment for me was my sophomore year in the state championship. We, it was 0-0 going into the ninth inning. And we ended up walking it off on a walk-off squeeze to win the state championship my sophomore year. So that was, that was probably my favorite high school memory was that celebration after that game. Were you on base? What do you remember about that? I was not. I did not play very well that game. I was, I think, like 0 for 4, 0 for 5. So I was just in – I was the first one on the field once the bunt got placed down, running and tackling the 6'9", 6'10 kid that laid the bunt down. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, you talk about that mental aspect that you referenced there for DJ Stewart, uh, you know, picking his brain. Because, I mean, as you know, I mean, one day you can go 3 for 4 or – or four for four, and the next day 0 for five. I mean, how do you manage, you know, that that men mentality? I mean, sometimes it's tough when you're going through a rough stretch. But for me, I like to analyze the game right after the game, whether it be good or bad. And by the time I get home and I'm all showered and, like, finished with my day, I try to completely switch my brain and look forward to the next game and prepare for the next game like the last one never happened. Yeah, that's a good way to approach it. Awesome. One of the things that I noticed recently on a graphic that was sent out by, by your team, the Charlotte Knights, was that they actually told, I think it might, might have been you or somebody else, the launch angle and the exit velocity. Have you seen these graphics like that? That's pretty cool. And I have. You, really cool. They are really cool. Do you keep up with that? Do you know in your mind that uh, you've, you've hit X amount of exit velocity or anything like that? Do you keep up with that? Um, I normally go after the game just to see the balls that were hit that day and just to look because we always compare and like me and my roommates talk back and forth about who hit it harder, blah, 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 blah. So it's always fun to see the graphics when we get home and we can have a little, little argument about who uh, – who made the best contact that day. So it's, it's yeah. a lot of fun. That is cool. Cause I know like with stat cast and major league baseball, they talk about, you know, a hard hit ball is like 95 mile per hour plus. Um, so you guys at the college level are, are looking at that too. Yes, we are. I feel like well, it plays a big role in solid contact leads to more hits in my opinion. So if you're barreling up baseballs, you're going to have and see more success during the games. You know, right now you're at 370. That's, uh, if you look at everyday players on your team, that's, that's tops on this team. Um, how have you been able to keep that uh, consistent level right there at around, not just around 300, you're well above it? Uh, just showing up to the field every day and trying to get better every single day and keeping my approach and staying true to what I know I can do as opposed to trying to do too much and hit home runs and just I just try to focus on staying in the middle of the field, which gives me the ability to pull the ball and go to the opposite field, which has been probably my strongest suit this season is the ability to hit it to all sides of the field, which is something I used to struggle with. And it actually got a lot better during COVID when the season got canceled and I got to go home and focus on driving baseballs everywhere. So my approach, I feel like, is the reason why I'm seeing the results that I want to be seeing on the field. Austin, uh, you've roughed up my alma mater, App State. I think you had a two-homer game earlier on this year. Um, take me back to maybe some of your favorite performances of, of this year. That was one of them because I, I finished that game, I believe, three for five with two home runs and a double. And it was my first two home run game in college. So that was exciting. And it was my first ball that I hit out to dead center field. I think it went 419 feet, something around there to dead center field. And I've had a couple, uh, three double games, which I think is a record here. UNC Charlotte, maybe to have a three double game. And I've had two of them this season. Is, which I think is exciting. Cause I love hitting doubles. That's awesome, man. It's hitting it pretty well. Uh, awesome. What's your transition from Tennessee to Charlotte been like? Um, it's been really enjoyable because at Tennessee, I enjoyed being there. I loved the guys. 
and the program was great, but I wasn't seeing the playing time that I wanted to be seeing. And that was the reason that I went into the transfer transfer portal and UNC Charlotte gave me a chance and it, it's great knowing that I made the right decision to come here and I picked the right school and I, I couldn't be happier where I am now. That's awesome to, to hear about that success and it's showing up on the field too. That's, that's the biggest part too. And Austin, recently you were named to the uh, Golden Spikes Award watch list at the very select group of, of individuals. Uh, what does that feel like for you? Uh, it was a big honor. That I wasn't really expecting it. I didn't really – I wasn't going into the season saying I'm going to make this watch list. But it kind of proved to me that all my hard work is paying off and to stay the course with what I'm doing because I'm seeing success and I'm seeing the results. So it motivated me to work even harder and just try to keep doing what I'm doing to ultimately – make me the best player I can possibly be. And that award is going to be named uh, in, in July sometime soon. Um, that's a list of 40 or so of the best players in college baseball. Uh, do you know anybody else that's on that list? Um, I haven't really gone through the list in detail, but my roommate last year, Liam Spence, is on the list as well, which was really cool. He was my roommate at Tennessee. He's the shortstop there. And I thought that was really cool. Very cool. Well, you guys are, are playing well. I know Old Dominion's a very good team. Uh, you just came off of that series. That, I mean, there's a, a team right there that's also in the top 25. Um, going forward, you, you got a little bit left in this regular season. I mean, what's the key for, for Charlotte to keep on playing well? Uh, we just need to stay and play our game. We can't get out of hand of what – and trying to do too much and focusing on winning games. We just need to – string together good at bats and have our pitchers pound the strike zone and we'll see the results that we ultimately want to see. You guys right now are 31 and 14. You got a series coming up uh, with Marshall uh, that'll begin in just a few days on Friday. Tell me about that series against Marshall. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be good to be back at the home field. We tend to play really well at the home field. And so that'll be exciting. I know my parents are coming up for the series, so I'm really looking forward. That's cool. Did your parents get to watch you much when you played at Tennessee, or, or do they get more often uh, a chance to, to see you play more now? They have more of a chance to see me play now because it's either a direct flight or it's only like a five-hour drive from Jacksonville. So they have – they're up here most weekends, which has been great, having my parents here every weekend and getting to see them. And I think it it's great having them – be able to come up every weekend as opposed to in Knoxville it was like eight or nine hours for a drive or two flights which was just a lot so it's it makes it easier for them to come to games now that I'm here at Charlotte. Austin Knight uh, right now leading everyday players in average with 370 lead the team with nine stolen bases uh, eight home runs which is second on the team right now you're playing very well Austin I know everybody in Jacksonville and at the bowl school very excited to see your success uh, congratulations and, and best of luck moving forward. Okay, man. I appreciate it.